Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer channel episode. Today is Monday the 20th of April 2020. Hello, how are you? I hope you are all safe. So I'm going to kick off today's chat with something which we were not expecting. The Duke of Edinburgh has released a message. So I am reading directly from the Royal Family Communications and they say, the Duke of Edinburgh has written a message to everyone who is helping to tackle this pandemic and keep essential services running. The full statement reads, as we approach World Immunisation Week, I wanted to recognise the vital and urgent work being done by so many to tackle the pandemic by those in the medical and scientific professions, at universities and research institutions, all united in working to protect us from COVID-19. On behalf of those of us who remain safe and at home, I also wanted to thank all key workers who ensure the infrastructure of our life continues. The staff and volunteers working on food production and distribution, those keeping postal and delivery services going, and those ensuring the rubbish continues to be collected. The Duke of Edinburgh is still affiliated to over 750 organisations, including scientific, technological research, healthcare and infrastructure sectors, which have responded to the outbreak. Now, as I said earlier, this statement came as a little bit of a surprise because the Duke of Edinburgh has taken his retirement incredibly seriously since stepping back as being a full-time working member of the family in 2017. So I think we can safely say that this message has directly come from the heart. He really did want to make this message at this time. As you know, across the UK, a number of public stadiums have been converted into additional hospitals, known as the Nightingale Hospitals. Now, to mark the occasion of the opening of the latest of these hospitals, Camilla made a video message. In creating this Nightingale Hospital, you have truly brought light to a dark time. But this isn't surprising. Manchester is a past master at bringing light to dark times. My husband and I visited Manchester in 2017, shortly after the terrible bombing, and were deeply moved and inspired by the city's courage and unity. It's difficult to comprehend the skill and astonishing speed with which this hospital has been completed, and it's almost impossible to express the pride that our country feels in all the people and organisations who have been involved in this vast project. The NHS, the military, social services, the planners, the builders, the technicians, and all the staff who work here. To each and every one of you, thank you. Camilla's message was sent from Burke Hall, the home which she is sharing up in Scotland with Prince Charles. In other news, tomorrow, April the 21st, is the Queen's 94th birthday. Usually, gun salutes will take place to honour the Queen's birthday across royal parks. The Queen has specifically asked this year for those not to take place. She did not feel that it would be appropriate in the current pandemic to celebrate her birthday on such a public scale. Also, usually flags are flown over public buildings that will now not take place this year. And remarkably, this is the first time that this has happened in her 68 year reign. A palace source has said that all the changes are in line with Her Majesty's wishes. Additionally, we also know that there will be no Troop in the Colour, which is the Queen's formal birthday parade, which takes place in June. The Queen is expected to make a series of private family video calls from Windsor Castle. In other news, Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, has been helping to prepare food packages and care packages for NHS Frimley Park. In a series of tweets, the royal family said, The Countess of Wessex helped to prepare food and care parcels for NHS staff at her local hospital, Frimley Park. Her Royal Highness also worked alongside volunteers. The Countess has joined millions of people up and down the country who are volunteering their time to support the NHS charitable initiatives and support vulnerable people in their communities. The Royal Family also revealed that this month they are marking National Pet Month. The nation's pets have kept us company during lockdown and have joined our daily walks. Now this I'm sure it's probably come directly from the Queen herself, who of course is a lover of animals. She loves her horses, and of course she is famously known for loving her dogs, in particular, corgis and 
Dorgies. The royal family shared that on her 18th birthday, Princess Elizabeth was given her very own corgi named Susan and has owned more than 30 corgis and dorgies since. Interesting fact, all of the Queen's corgis are directly descendants of Susan. Her Majesty's love of horses has remained with her throughout her life. Here she is pictured with her pony Peggy at the age of six. Today she still rides horses and takes a great interest in the horses which she breeds and owns for racing. And I'm sure the Queen is much looking forward to the time when she can get back into the saddle and go for a ride around Windsor Great Park. On April the 18th, Clarence House tweeted, Congratulations to all those people who took part in the National Youth Orchestra's performance last night. The Duchess of Cornwall has been royal patron since 2013. And they said, thank you for supporting our young musicians. Duchess Camilla said, I'm so proud that these brilliant young musicians, with the help of the public, are performing Beethoven's Ode to Joy for our wonderful NHS and care workers this evening. A huge thank you for cheering up the nation. And Camilla released a special photograph to mark the event. The photograph shows Camilla in her porch at home in Burkhall, Scotland. And of course, she is playing the triangle. facility named uh, so evocatively and so appropriately Calon Adraig, what can I say except Dioch or Galon, and express the warmest possible thanks for what you have done and uh, all that you will do in this hospital and all those other field hospitals across Wales uh, where buildings have been transformed as part of the immense effort to combat the dreadful threat uh, we face. Klongavach Yadai Ichigid. Harry and Meghan, they have sent a letter to some of the UK major news publications telling them that they do not intend to interact with them in any way whatsoever going forward in the future. So it is my understanding that these are the following news publications which the letter was sent to. The Daily Express, the express.co.uk, the Sunday Express, the Daily Mail, the Mail on Sunday, the Mail Online, including the US site, dailymail.com, the Daily Mirror, mirror.co.uk, Sunday Mirror, the Sunday People, the Sun, the Sun on Sunday, and the Sun.uk. And that relates to four major news groups here in the UK. So I am now going to read to you the letter that was sent to those news publications. The letter reads, As the Duke and Duchess of Sussex now settle into the next chapter of their lives and no longer receive any publicly funded support, we are writing to set a new media relations policy, specifically as it pertains to your organisation. Like you, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex believe that a free press is a cornerstone to any democracy particularly in moments of crisis. At its best, this free press shines a light on dark places, telling stories that would otherwise go untold, standing up for what's right, challenging power and holding those who abuse the system to account. It has been said that journalism's first obligation is to the truth. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex agree wholeheartedly. It is gravely concerning that an influential slice of the media over many years has sought to insulate themselves from taking accountability what they say or print, even when they know it to be distorted, false or invasive beyond reason. When power is enjoyed without responsibility, the trust we all place in this much needed industry is degraded. There is a real human cost to this way of doing business and it affects every corner of society. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have watched people they know, as well as complete strangers, have their lives completely pulled apart for no good reason other than the fact that salacious gossip boosts advertising revenue. With that said, please note that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will not be engaging with your outlet. There will be no corroboration and zero engagement. This is also a policy being instated for their communications team in order to protect that team from the side of the industry that readers never see. This policy is not about avoiding criticism. It's not about shutting down public conversation or censoring accurate reporting. Media have every right to report on the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, good or bad, but it can't be based on a lie. 
They also want to be very clear this is not in any way a blanket policy for all media. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are looking forward to working with journalists and media organisations all over the world, engaging with grassroots media, regional and local media and young and up and coming journalists to spotlight issues and causes that so desperately need acknowledging. And they look forward to doing whatever they can to help further opportunities for more diverse and underrepresented voices who are needed now more than ever. What they won't do is offer themselves up as currency for an economy of clickbait and distortion. We are encouraged that this new approach will be heard and respected. And just in case you were wondering, today's tiara is the Spencer family tiara, which of course Prince Harry's mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, famously wore to her wedding. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also hit the notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.